I really need someone to tell me if having kids is worth it. I'm 30 years old, I've been married for six years. I think my partner would be an amazing dad. And I've been waiting for this moment of clarity to hit me for the last like four years and I it's just not happening. When I think of myself with a kid today, I'm terrified. But when I think of myself in 20 years, I see myself with a family. How am I supposed to bridge those two people? So please, is the loss of sleep, is the loss of identity, giving up your body, like, is it worth it? There is no shortage of opinions when it comes to parenting online. But today I wanted to answer the question in the best way that I know how, and that question is, should you have kids? The reality of this question is that nobody can answer it for you because they aren't you. When you are in the online world, it is extremely frowned upon to say anything negative about being a parent because it almost shows as a reflection of your love or disdain for your child, as if that has anything to do with it. Really online, I feel that people do sugarcoat a lot of what it looks like to be a parent. You'll definitely see people complaining about it. You'll definitely see the memes, you see the jokes. And at first, before I had kids, I was like, dude, enough shut up, we get it, you're tired. But then the reality of parenting comes in and you just realize this is not something that until you experience it, you can quite understand the gravity of what that feels like. And so I think a lot of people have the question of like, should I have kids? Do I do it or not? I feel like I can't get a straight answer. What is it like to be a parent? I had these questions myself. I always saw people say, parenting is hard, parenting is hard. And I was like, what does that mean though? Like what is what about it is hard? I couldn't understand. You can only compare hard to the hardest thing that you've ever experienced and that differs for everyone. Maybe somebody has lived a life of extreme difficulty. Maybe somebody's had a relatively easy go. Maybe somebody grew up in a family with 15 brothers and sisters, and then maybe somebody grew up as an only child. You only have the frame of reference to what you have. So I wanna to talk to you today as a mother. I dealt with infertility for years, was told that I was never going to be able to have children. So I gave up. And in that giving up, I came to an acceptance of, I'm never gonna get to be a mom, so I need to figure out what my life will look like without children. And so I had mapped out my life. I was really excited for it. I was really looking forward to having a bunch of cats, having a bunch of animals, growing my farm, my homestead, building our house, doing interior design, traveling. Shockingly, after 15 years of infertility, I found myself pregnant. Spoiler alert, if you're new here, it kicked my ass. The reality is, is when I say it kicked my ass, it changed every facet of my being. And now this is such a polarizing topic because anytime that you talk about something like this, people say, motherhood doesn't have to change you. Parenthood doesn't have to. Let it adapt with you. Okay, I hear the words. I, I understand the sentiment, but have you ever met a kid? Who am I? I'm just a mom of an almost three-year-old who dealt with infertility and has gone through the ringer since becoming a mom because the reality of parenthood is in so many ways, it is a lot of what I thought it was gonna be. And in so many ways, there is no preparing you. And so I wanna talk to you guys about that today. Before we do, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is HelloFresh. If you don't know who HelloFresh is, they're a meal delivery service. They deliver meals directly to your door each week. And in each box are the meals that you have chosen. It has been such a wonderful thing for our family to have these well thought out, delicious meals come straight to our door. It's been just absolutely beautiful to have a nice, delicious, balanced, meal that our whole family will love. Every one tastes absolutely delicious. Pre-portioned ingredients can help cut down on food waste while step-by-step -step instructions make cooking a breeze. HelloFresh wants you to have it all. They want you to have free time and fresh tasty food. That's why they take care of meal planning and deliver the ingredients so everything that you need to whip up a delicious meal arrives right to you. When you need dinner fast, you don't need to call for delivery. You can think of HelloFresh because their fast and fresh recipes are ready in just 15 minutes or less. Plus HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yummy. Very good. I bet you my kid is gonna absolutely love this. There's zero question. I'll report back in about 10 minutes if he does. If you guys are interested in checking out HelloFresh, you guys can go to hellofresh.com and use code rawbeauty50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com using code rawbeauty50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. And thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring the beginning portion of today's video. And now we are going to jump into the realities of what it looks like to be a parent and why it is so disagreed upon. My daughter is 18, so we've made it through childhood. In my experience, Motherhood has provided me with the highest of highs and the lowest of fucking lows. You give every ounce of yourself and sometimes receive the biggest blessings. And other times you're fucking invisible. You will bear such weight of responsibility, but there will come a day when you gotta hand over some of that and let them be responsible for big decisions. And it feels like 
I just want to take it off your hands. Let me do it. Oh my gosh, I had no time and space to myself. But then when they get older and become more individual, I do anything to have her all up in my space again. There are so many moments when you're so fucking proud and other times when they embarrass the shit out of you. Is it worth it? My daughter deserves the fucking world and it is unbearable pain when I cannot deliver. Oh my gosh, and when they experience their own heartbreak and you can't take it away? Motherhood showed me what it truly is to hurt on someone else's behalf. It feels helpless at times and other times is heaven. They're just wrapped around their little finger. And there's no place I'd rather be. And the way you look at yourself, the world, your parents, your own childhood, your own moral compass, uh, the world. It changes in a way that I've only been changed because of my child. There are no breaks because if you do have a moment for a break or a vacation, they occupy the most precious parts of your brain and your heart and it's exhausting but somehow some way for the love of that kiddo you will summon unimaginable strength you will use every ounce of energy to do both the expected and unexpected it's the coziest bond i've ever had with someone and the most disruptive relationship ever but is it worth it for me i have one child and i am done she is worth it the thought of more children not worth it. You can take that answer however you want, but no one's experience will be sufficient enough to prepare you for your own decision. You just have to follow your own heart. So when you first announce that you are having a child, you always get a lot of really excited people. You inevitably will start hearing the things come through of like, oh, get your sleep now. You're never going to sleep again. It does not matter what somebody says to you, what I say to you, what your mom says, what somebody else wants to let you know in the grocery store, your child will be unique to you. That doesn't mean your child will be what you hope your child will be. I don't know how to stress this in any other way than to say, children are born with their own temperament. You can be the most chill, calm, relaxed person in the world, introverted and like highly overstimulated. Your baby could come out and overstimulating loud, noisy, chaotic whirlwind. It's not like your temperament just transfers to your child. Children are born with their own temperament. And I think the quicker we realize this and the sooner we realize that that's what changes the idea of motherhood, the sooner we will all be better off for it. Because children have their own temperament, it may not match yours. You need to know that the child you might have might be somebody that is a little bit directly conflicting with the type of person that you are and it takes a lot of adjustment. There is a time after you have a child called matrescence, which is the time after your child is born where you, the woman, are becoming the mother. Not everybody is going to have this the same scenario. So some people like me may be like, oh, it's a lot and you need to prepare. Some people might say, I don't know what they're talking about. It was really easy for me. I have friends whose postpartum was like a dream. It was as if they flicked on the dreamiest, softest, glowiest scene from a movie and their child just slept. Everything was beautiful and magical and soft and dreamy. Their child was really adaptable and kind of fit along with their life. So life could continue while the child was just kind of there. And then I have other friends where everything you once knew, and I am not exaggerating, is something different now. You are sleeping in chunks of like 30 minute increments, which sounds funny, but it's not funny when you're in it. It literally is a form of torture and you feel like you're gonna die. No support network, postpartum depression and anxiety, and you don't know which one you're gonna be. And now this isn't to scare you. This isn't to push people off of it. This is to say, let go of whatever you think you know about what it is to be a parent. I've likened it to this before and some people don't like this analogy, some people do. When you're at a party and you're not having a good time, you can go home. When you're on a vacation and you're like, dude, I really am not having fun, you can book an earlier flight home. When you have a job and you don't like your boss, you can quit. When you're a parent and you're having a hard day and you don't wanna do it anymore, sorry. Not only do you have to do it right now, but every day for the rest of your life. And it's not 18 years, people wanna say that. It's for the rest of your life. And it's not just the physical work. It's not just the amount of actual labor you have to do, which is unfathomable. Every time you sit down, stand up because somebody's calling your name for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what they were doing when they built our bathroom. Not only that, it's the mental struggles. It's the mental load. It's the constant knowing that your love of your life, this being that you love more than anything in the world that you cherish more than anything that you would die for, you would lay on train tracks for, you would, you would sacrifice yourself 
in any situation with love and admiration, that exists. That little person, they, they now exist. And that right there is a crushing weight of responsibility to know that you love something so much and that you need to keep them safe and everything about their life safety wise and time wise and structure wise clothes food time energy love time for you to read them books time for you to do everything that needs to be done it rides on you and unless you have a large support network which many people in western culture do not have it can be so overwhelming a lot of times you'll see people say nobody made you do this you wanted this that's first of all not always the case but second of all tell me you don't have kids without telling me you don't have kids <laughs> i am the first person to listen to anyone who wants to say how hard it is because dear lord jesus it's just never ending i don't feel like i always need to preface everything that i'm saying with how much i love my son before i go into talking about how hard it is obviously i love him i would never go back if you gave me the option you said i could snap my fingers right now and go back to my old life i would not take it i love my son he is the light of my life he's funny he's amazing he's got an incredible personality he's so silly he has brought joy and comfort and love and glimmers of absolute hope and wonder and silliness into my life that I could have never had had I never met him. The world is better because he exists in it. He is an absolute joy. He is the love of my life. I kiss him 800,000 times a day and tell him how much I love him, how lucky I am to be his mommy. I just need that to be known so I don't have to say it again because one thing can be true while another is true. I can love him so much it physically hurts me to think of not having him. It hurts, it's a knot in my stomach, knowing that one day I won't get to see him every second of every day. And it can also be so hard that I'm like, are you? how the fuck does the human species exist? There is no way to talk about it without getting backlash on it. Because again, like I said, we all have such different experiences with parenting that somebody else might come in and be like, oh my God, I'm so sick of hearing everybody else complain. It's really not that bad. For you, for you. I, I just cannot stress enough for you. Do you have help? Do you have uh, mental stability? Do you have mental illness, support network? Do you have a village? Do you have friends? Um, do you have finances, resources? Do you have the ability to send your children to daycare? Do you have to stay home against your will and not wanting to be a stay at home mom? Are you dying to be a stay at home mom, but you have to go to work? There are so many factors in the Western culture society of how we parent that make it not conducive to en an enjoyable experience. Let's just say that. And so it is, it is not lost on me why so many people shit on it when they hear people talking about it because it's like, well, that's not the kid's fault. Obviously, that doesn't mean it's easy. We don't have the same level of what we're supposed to have, what we're supposed to have, what parenting is supposed to look like is the village that everybody talks about. Everybody talks about, oh, it takes a village. It takes a village. Where, the, where are they? Where is the village? They, hello? Village? There should always be multiple hands on deck. We are meant to live in groups. We are meant to live with societies of people that have our best interest at heart, that care for our young the way that we do, that care for us the way we deserve to be cared for. It is not supposed to be the way that it is. And so no shit that it's hard because it is hard, dude. Like this is not the way that it's supposed to be. And we can love our children more than anything in the world. And we can also state the fact that it is absolutely insane the way that parents are treated in today's society and that they are not cared for, they are not taken care of. And the parent is the last person cared for. The child, usually, if the parent is loving and caring, gets the best, they get what we have, they get the best of what we can give. And then we're left just absolutely like drained and dead by the end of the day. This isn't to push people away from having children. This is to say that the reality of what it's like to have children in America, that's all I can speak to, is very, very different from what you see online. Just look at what you see online and try to fill in the blanks of how much maybe help this person has. Do they have a nanny that they're able to get? A lot of family support network around. If you don't have those things, it's exponentially harder. Why wouldn't it be? Because you don't have people there and we're supposed to have people there all the time to be able to help us, be able to just give us a moment of reprieve. There is no way to tell you what a day looks like as a parent because every second of every day is different. And that's another point that I have to say. Kids change constantly. So right when you think that you know how to parent, your kid changes. Like two weeks ago, my child was a completely different child than he is today. His little personality 
inborn. The kid was born who he is. And so trying to parent with my personality that is a lot different, we're very, very different. It's so challenging at times to feel like you're doing it right, to go to bed at the end of the night and think I did a good job. It's such a huge crushing responsibility that it's overwhelming at times to know that this right now is the childhood that you are going to look back on and either feel like you thrived in or that you survived in. And I need to make sure that I'm doing the best for you while also doing the best for myself. Like I said, I've had some of the highest highs as a mom. I've, I have experienced things that I wouldn't have ever got to experience, love that I never knew possible. The love is as crushing as I was scared about. It is, yep, it is e more so. I've also had some of the lowest lows I've ever experienced in my life, and I'm only not even three years into this. I cannot even imagine when I'm a seasoned parent and I've been doing this for 20 years. Is it worth it? Ultimately, yeah, I am very happy. I love being a mommy and I am so blessed that I was able to experience this. I'm doing my absolute best to parent as best as I can with what I have. I personally deal with chronic pain and so it's been quite rough some days to experience that and also have to be a loving, thoughtful, kind mother. And it, it's, it's hard, but I don't want anybody to come to this video and feel discouraged by the reality of what parenting is. It can be wonderful. There are some days where I'm like, today was literally the perfect day. When you're out at the farmer's market picking fresh blueberries off of the trees and your child is running through the sunshine laughing with his friend and you're not having to be on high alert, you're sitting there chatting, having a coffee. Those moments, those ones right there, gold. They're the golden moments. They're those glimmers in the day where you feel like, oh, this is so good. And you can sit and take those moments in and experience them and just love them and know this is the motherhood I wanted to have. The next day, your kid might be puking all over. Not one word comes out of their mouth that isn't whining. Everything you offer, they don't wanna eat. Everything you want to do, they don't want to do. You leave the house, there's crying. You are at the store, meltdown. It might be so overstimulating that you just need a second away, but you can't take a second away because you are the household. I would have loved to make a much more structured video about this with a script maybe, with bullet points, but the reality of it is, is that I don't actually have a moment to do that right now because I have a child downstairs that is gonna need me in about a half an hour and I am getting this video up when I can. There are things that you learn to do as a parent. You learn to manage your time much more wisely. There is no boredom in my life. There's not a second of time wasted. There is not a second of time unused. Uh, I find it very difficult to relax now. <laughs> I prioritize family time. I prioritize my mental health. I prioritize being a kind, patient, loving mother who tries to practice gentle and kind parenting with my son. I prioritize wonderful time outside and the relationship with my husband. And I recognize that I know for a fact, because every mother and every parent has told me that this is just a season in life and that this season passes, one season passes and another one takes its place. And so babyhood was really hard for me. Toddlerhood is much, much easier for me. Sometimes it's the exact opposite. One of those just dream babies who you put down in the crib and then they just fall asleep on their own. I, it's hard for me to believe babies like that exist, but I know they do. Mine, not like that, still to this day, still needs me all throughout the night and all throughout every nap. You could have either one and you don't know which one you're gonna get. And it may be beautiful and you may have five kids because you loved it so much. You may have one and be like, I am so one and done, I can't even believe that I ever thought I would have wanted to. And you don't know until you have kids. So should you do it? I think you should be realistic about it. I think people should do a lot of what they wanna do and then when they settle down, if you really wanna have children, you really should. I think you can be happy without kids. I think that kids make life really fun and they they bring another level that is just, you can't, you can't know until you know. I don't know, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't because I don't know you and you know you. And if you find it in your heart that you really want to have a family, that you love so much the idea of being a parent, then go for it. We only live once, so live it up. But also know that you might have a different parenting style than your partner. So you might want to have that conversation ahead of time. I ultimately want to say, I don't think that any of us who decide to be parents will ever regret the decision. So ultimately, I think it's probably safe to say, if you desire to be a parent, 
go for it. Just know the reality of it and know that it's gonna be a challenge in the beginning. I'm, I was literally just downstairs kissing my son and telling him how much I love him and looking at him and being like, I just can't believe I get to be your mommy. So I feel like it's not only worth it, but it's the best thing I've ever done. I think that children are a blessing. I think they are wonderful. They're hilarious. They're beautiful. They're amazing. They're so funny. They're so, they are the future. Like kids are the best. I just, I would have never thought that me of all people would be saying any of this because this wasn't me. I thought kids were really annoying. And I thought that they were kind of just, you know, okay. I wish that all children had wonderful loving parents because the world would be cured <laughs> if they did. Um, childhood means so much and kids matter so much and yes they are difficult but it's not their fault it's got to be really difficult to be little and not know anything and not understand anything and we all have these expectations of these tiny little people who have no idea what an expectation even is or what the word even means and they don't know what to do because they're little and so we have these ideas of what makes a good kid there is no bad kid kids are just really it's so dependent on the the people around them and what we expect of them I think a lot of people underestimate what parenting actually looks like. And I think that social media is to blame for a lot of that. It can look like dressing your kids up in cute outfits and doing little silly things with the dog. You've got 23 hours, 58 minutes left after all that. So then now what, what next? We are already expected to do so much and American hustle culture and work, work culture in itself is toxic. I think it's even worse with parenting. You are expected to do the work of a village and you're expected to do it with a smile on your face and shut the hell up. And if you say anything outside of that, you wanted this. And then a lot of people just don't say anything at all. It's, you know, it is one of the most beautiful things I've ever done in my entire life. And I do love him as much as I feared I would. <laughs> I do. I love him so much. Seeing his little face, seeing his silliness, tickling him, playing hide and seek with him drawing and coloring and kissing and snuggling and nursing him. It is like the most warm comfort I could ever experience. It's a love I, I it's, it's crushing it's so much in the best way. It is sacrificing all of yourself at all seconds of every day for somebody else. If you don't feel ready to do that, don't do it till you're ready. You may not be ready. You may feel ready now. I don't know if I got out what I wanted to say in this video because the reality is when you're on the internet, a video like this is so taboo. I remember seeing a video, I can't even remember who, what her name is. Uh, gosh, if I can find it, I will link it somewhere or I will have it up on the screen. But I remember before I had my son, over three years ago, I saw this video and she said, I don't like being a mom. And I clicked on the video because I was like, how could you say that you're holding your baby? But what her whole thing was that I love my children. I love my kids. I love them with an absolute passion that nothing else could ever take away. But I don't love the care roles of being a mother. But it's not about being a mom. I love being a mom. I love it. And on days where I have had adequate help, it's very better. <laughs> it's very better. Um, and it's much less emotionally and uh, physically draining. It's okay to say I would never give this up in a million years. You couldn't pry it from my cold, dead fucking hands. And to say I need desperately need a break sometimes and I am tired <laughs> and uh, I have needs too. I'm a person too. That is my video. I hope this was in any way helpful for anybody. Uh, it's, I remember thinking, what do moms do? Like, what is it that it's hard about it? It's that it never ends. It's that it's constant. It's that it's every time you've ever sat down, you'll have to get up. Every time you ever are making food, make more. Are they gonna eat it? Probably not. Are they gonna be grumpier because they didn't eat it? Yes. All these things that you think you know, you do not know cause kids are feral. And we're in toddler stage right now. We haven't started school yet. Dealing with friends, dealing with fights, dealing with him being upset with me. Oh my God, we have so much more coming down the line. Like an unfathomable amount of things coming down the line to greet me in this life. And I'm not ready, but I am ready, but I'm not, but I am. Cause I have to be. Well, I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye.